All right, you ready? All right. Welcome to Pod Band Pipecast, the world's premier pipe band podcast. Yay! <laughs> See, I would have, I would have messed that up. I would have totally messed that up. So it's better that way, for sure. Well, you have the next episode to mess it up. <laughs> Listen, let's, all, let's let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> All right, everyone, we are now live on the Podband Podcast, and stop, we're here. Stop. Oh. It's, I mean, we're live now, I, I guess. Nobody's listening to it live. Well, no, <laughs> but as if we were live, as if they, they were listening. We're pretending uh, they're listening. Okay, action. <laughs> action. We're pretending we have listeners? <laughs> That's what you got to do for a podcast. You know, like, you pretend people are listening. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> All right. So we are live with, not live. I keep saying that. Pretend, pretend live. We are speaking today with uh, Sean Cahill and Matt Cotini of the Arizona Fire Service Pipe Band. Sean is the pipe major and president, and Matt is the drum major and board member. And did I get that right? That was a lot of titles. That was a lot, yes, you did good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you again for being on our show. This is uh, gonna be really fun. This is our, our first four person episode, I guess, simultaneous four person episode. Right. And this is gonna be great. All right. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about uh, the fire service band the state band in another episode. This first episode, we're gonna get everyone used to the idea of what is a service pipe band? Specifically, you guys are in the fire service. Um, what is your band and what do they do? But before that, we have some questions to kind of let people get to know you and what you do. So it. How'd, how'd you guys get into pipe band? Matt, how are we gonna work this? Are you answering first or my? What we'll do is, uh, if, the, if the sentence starts with a letter from the first half of the alphabet, I'll answer first. <laughs> and if it's... <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So we're just going to talk over each other is what you're saying. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, let's see. I started learning because we had a guy in the fire department uh, pass away from cancer. And Mesa Fire Department came out and did the uh, girl for us. Uh, a bunch of us were interested and started taking lessons with Michael McClanathan at Station 41, Phoenix Fire Station 41. Um, and then from there, I met Len Wood, and he was running the Phoenix Band, and then asked me to come out and play, and the rest is history. Matt, now you're up. Sure. How long? That was about 2002. I'm sorry, I didn't okay. throw that up. Um, so I got started um, when I was in the academy. My training officer comes up to me and says, do you play the drums? Yeah. Can you teach people to play the drums? And, sure. He goes, all right, I'm going to learn how to play the pipes. You'll be the drummer. We're going to start a pipe band for the fire department. I found this band that'll take, you know. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Um, and I've done lots. Of, I've been drumming since I was about. 13, I think. I went to university for percussion and I did rock and metal and jazz and orchestra, all sorts of stuff, African hand drumming. And then we showed up for our, uh, to the Glendale pipe band that took us under wing to teach us and Bruce shows me this music. <laughs> like, what? And then he's playing these things. And I'm going, none of this makes sense. So we stuck with them and they got it straightened out and we got there. Um, so it's been 12 years now. Uh, doing that. Yeah, pipe band music is definitely di different than like regular concert band music. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, just a follow up question <clears throat> to that. So what what made each of you interested in playing pipes? I know Matt just kind of says he got thrown into it. And Sean, you said you actually saw pipers and you're like, oh, I want to do that. What about yeah, it? Was pretty, interesting? pretty much. So I remember being a kid and listening to records that my grandfather brought over from when he was in the UK and hearing music. 
and thinking it was pretty cool sounding tunes, you know, like good stuff. And I, I wanted to learn, but it was um, like I was kind of ignorant and there was no internet in, in the time frame. We won't mention years, but um, <laughs> so I pretty much assumed that you had to be in Scotland to learn how to play bagpipes. I know that there was such a, a big scene here in the States and in North America. So I just kind of blew it off and then fast forward 20 years later or so. Um, so I person was like, well, somebody had to teach these guys. So uh, we just made some phone calls and got into it. So I, I've liked it since I was a kid. I've liked pipe music since I was a kid. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's, I, I'm one of the guys that think that when we started, that stuck with it to pretty much everybody else has moved on and they're not doing anything else. Um, they're not playing anymore or have retired from the department or, or whatever, so. Cool. Matt, do you have anything to add about why, why would you agree to be in a pipe band? <laughs> uh, for the fame and the glory, really is. <laughs> it's the pay, it's gotta be the money. Yeah, it's all oh, gonna yeah. be the money, yeah. Uh, because he was, he was a recruit fireman and he was scared to say no. Yeah. That's yeah. why he agreed <laughs> to be in the, Part of my band. Um, but I, had, uh, when I was in college, my summer job, I worked for a guy who, um, uh, Celtic Lion Rampant Traders in Illinois, that would go to all the fests and set up and sell Scottish stuff. So I did that for a few summers and obviously got influenced and started learning. I remember one of the first times we were at one of the games and um, my friend Jack is talking with somebody else. Oh, this band is good. And oh, that band's not so good. And I'm going, how can you tell the difference? Like, <laughs> It's all just squeaking. But, you know, after three summers of that, you, you start hearing it and start growing on me and I appreciated the, uh, the culture of it. And then, you know, yeah, Sean's right. I definitely had that like, well, <laughs> I'm brand new, so I have to say yes. But I grew up uh, in the fire service all, with my dad and my brother on the job back home in Chicago. And, and so that tradition was there. I'd seen that at funerals. And so, you know, the opportunity to get to do that seemed really awesome. And it has been. Cool. And, and we'll get into that in a bit about what exactly do you do um, as a fire service pipe band. But uh, first, what do you do individually now in the pipe band world? I know you both play sort of in like the, the civilian side of things and then also in the fire service. So could you talk about what you do in all those roles? Um, so for Matt, yeah. Yeah, for me, um, so I've mentioned the Glendale Pipes and Drums that uh, took us under wing, Steve Brandell and I under wing years ago. We still play with them. I've been in their grade four core and we just started up a grade five. And they, and so I'll be um, be the lead tip for that. Um, so really, Congratulations, that's cool. Thank yeah. you. And I've got, uh, what's really cool about it is given the fire service thing, uh, I think two of the pipers are firefighters and two of the drummers, the snares that I just brought on and the bass are also firefighters. Wow. So kind of a cool thing. Oh, and I teach. I have lessons at my house every week for all the fire service guys. Cool. Uh, so I, I played with Phoenix in the grade three band, um, took last year off, which in hindsight is, is bad, was a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> just, um, just was getting tired and had a lot going on between, uh, work and some, some obligations at work, different stuff going on at work. Um, needed a little time off and then I was coming back this year to play with the Vegas band in grade four and then the season got scrapped so mm -hmm. um that's where we're at there I've done solos grade two in the solos now uh haven't done solos in a few years again with the band stuff and I know how for me it seems overwhelming you go to games and it's uh you know, you're worried about competing with the band and your solos. I know a guy's been doing it for years, and, but I want it to be fun, too. I don't want it to seem like work. So for me, it's kind of an outlet versus, you know, something that I worry about or want to stress about. I want to have fun with it. So mm -hmm. that's about as far as the 
the pipe band world side of things go. Um, I've got some newer guys, but I always kind of pass them on to Len or, or uh, Will or other instructors that I think, like I want to get them the basics and then get somebody that's a little more regimented in their teaching style. Um, Cause I, I mean, it's ultimately part-time for me where these guys are doing that kind of as a full-time gig. So they get a little bit more stability with those teachers, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's about it for me. I'm probably missing stuff. I just play. I, I'm a piper in the bands. I was a, the VP for the Phoenix band for a couple of years, but um, it wasn't a whole lot with that. I did some of the Wisp Desert Branch stuff. Um, best president there for a little bit, but ultimately, I think. All that stuff put together was I took a step back and said, "All right, I'm taking on too much, too much work outside of work." So, um, mm-hmm. so then I'm just back to I play in these bands, and the fire service band is where I have a leadership role. So, that's it for me. So then. What does a fire service pipe band do and like where you guys play and when and like, how does that work? I I mean, uh, ultimately, I think this is gonna cross over into some of your later questions. And so the the Arizona fire service band was set up to kind of, uh, that's the word I'm looking for that, like uh, get everybody's music the same. get everybody playing common settings of the same tunes because everybody was playing too, but they were not the same settings. So we kind of wanted to do that. And then we had a bunch of bands that had one and two and three, you know, we have beer and a, pipe, a piper and two drummers over here. Uh, Mesa has been the only department that's really had kind of a big band over the years. Mesa and Tucson. Tucson yeah. Um, uh, but everybody else had, kind of had ones and twos, you know, like, and it wasn't really a band. It was, you had a piper and a couple drummers. So what we've done is to come in and kind of supplement the ranks um, <clears throat> for those guys. So if it's their gig, we're just there to fill in to make them have a band um, so that they have that presence at whatever they're doing. And we typically, what we'll say is we do fire department related stuff. So it's uh, obviously funerals, uh, line of duty funerals. We do the retiree funerals, active duty funerals, uh, memorials, uh, graduations, academy graduations, promotional ceremonies, and then the the odd things here and there that the departments are involved in that they ask us to take part in. Did we get... Did we get all that? Because Matt's face was on my screen the whole time. He must have been making noise. (laughs) (laughs) I was probably because I'm tapping. Uh, Uh The The drummer, he's got to be playing. Yeah, can't stop. Yep. We do the states and, I don't know, probably one of the largest pub crawls in the country for St. Patty's Day. Rent two buses, one to East Valley, one to West Valley, hit eight or nine bars. It's epic. (laughs) <laughs> it is a, it's a large undertaking for sure. So, um, so then how, being that you're both in the fire service band and also in like the civilian side bands, how are, what are some ways that fire service bands are different um, from civilian bands? I would say ultimately the biggest difference would be uniform stuff. <laughs> you know, the, the, fire service band tends to lean more towards the like the pageantry piece of it as well whereas civilian bands have kind of dressed that down over the years um but beyond that like we've tried to instill the you know the musicality and everything um when we're out playing and not you know the idea that somebody knows what it's supposed to sound like will be listening all the time so don't you know don't go out and just trash things just to say, well, nobody cares, you know, so we've kind of changed the mindset on stuff like that. And I think everybody's come along really well on that stuff. Um, But beyond that, I don't know, Matt, you got anything with that? Well, yeah, I think there is a a big difference, which is how people get into it. 
I'm going to guess, you know, if we asked you guys or, you know, civil, just civilian band members, what I did, it might be like in the family, Sean mentioned hearing it when she, he was younger, I was influenced by college, but you did it because you thought it'd be interesting, be fun, it was the next musical challenge, things like that. You ask any fireman, any cop why they're in their band, it's to honor the fallen. Mm -hmm. Period. That's the reason they got in. Now, <laughs> they may be in now for, you know, other reasons, but uh, um, that's how, that's where we all get started. That's when I got approached about it. Um, you know, we all got in it to, to honor the fallen, and, and that, that, I think, s creates a different culture then also, right? So there's a difference culturally in when you have competition bands, there could be, there's the ones that are just you know, they're laser focused, hardcore, right? There's that. Uh, there's the ones that are like, yeah, we're a competition band. We're going to work to get a little bit better, but we're going to enjoy this. We're adults. This is honestly a hobby. You know, they, they have that kind of atmosphere. Uh, and then our cultural atmosphere <clears throat> is, is about that purpose. And since that's unfortunately the majority of the stuff we do, um, we want to, you know, put forth our best, but we aren't always, um, when we get started out, there's no, there might be another difference there too. If someone, you know, just comes to a pipe band and says, Hey, I've never played snare before. I doubt that they would be handed their drum, the hardest drum scores and told, okay, cool, do this. But at least for the drumming side and service bands that has occurred a lot. So part of the other difference is that it's a little more of a, just, just get out there and start doing it and then going for the education and the development as opposed to the other way around. Okay. So we've talked. Oh, do you have something, Taylor? Oh yeah, I was just going to ask. Um, so Sean mentioned the uh, the uniforms and kind of the civilian bands kind of dressing down um, over the years. Could you explain sort of what what you wear that civilian bands don't wear? I know this is probably extremely obvious to anyone that's seen a picture of a fire service band, but for some people, it might not be. Yeah, so I mean, obvious. The big uh, obvious piece is that the uh, horsehair sporin that seems to be the um, the one that spats. Um, and I don't, I don't know what the spats thing is all about in the fire service band, but man, they love the spats. So, uh, <laughs> so um, and like the forest, the doublet jacket, um, and uh, plaids for the pipers and drummers so like the full kit you would see on the military and drum majors that's kind of the full kit for the fire service bands on the big you know the memorial events and the and the line of duty funerals um and uh ultimately i think that's just the crossover from a military dress paramilitary organization because that's how fire departments and police departments are run um probably fire department to a lesser extent than the police department, but it is, there is a rank structure and a chain of command and, and that kind of stuff within the fire department. Um, so I think it's kind of the military piece carries over to that. Mm -hmm. Matt? Yeah, we, we like the pomp and circumstance. Like, you know, if, if it's all about giving this, giving, you know, the honorable ceremony and everything, then we're gonna come, you know, dressed to the nines. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, we can go on to the next question now. Thank you. <laughs> so we've touched a bit on why they're different. Why or what are some ways that civilian bands and fire service bands are, are similar? I, I think probably the the most basic way is that the drummers are awesome. True. <laughs> yeah. I'm obvious. I'm so outnumbered early. I didn't even realize that till just now. Uh yeah, I mean, who drummers are always awesome, right? <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, it, some right? of the some of the <laughs> some of the parade the parade music and that uh, is probably in similar um, between then the desire to play better. Like I think every that gets together ultimately knows there's always room for improvement. Um, I mean, from the top down, I 
would say that that's probably always striving for the best sound you can get and, and personal bests and things like that. Uh, so I think those are all very similar. Um, you know, educationally trying to further your players and, and make them better and um, get the most out of everybody. I think those are all similar to civilian bands. Matthew? Um, scotch and beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, booze, yeah. Um, actually, there, there's becoming so much crossover of the two as of late. Uh, that that's kind of interesting. So uh, the Glendale Pipes and Drums, right, started out as the Glendale Police Honor Guard Band. And then some of them said, oh, hey, we could go to this competition thing. And they created, you know, out of that. And the irony of that is they were all civilians in a police band. And now that it's that civilian band, it's mostly firemen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so there's some of that. There's, uh, there is a local Arizona department, and I'm not going to say who, because they haven't officially announced, but a local Arizona department that is planning on fielding a grade five band uh, in March at Phoenix. And so you see things like that. And then around the country, I know there's a lot, of, I'm sure you know Jeremy Downs um, and what's going on in, in Texas there. A lot of the civilian and service bands are pretty much all the same people. And we're seeing more and more of that around, more and more guys who are um, going to competitions, doing solos, going to schools to improve themselves. So the, as far as the similarities, there's a, there's a lot, but even the differences are getting smaller. We're starting to really blend into the same spaces. That's exciting. It is. It is. It's it's pretty big because I mean, 18 years, 17, 18 years ago, I when I played with Phoenix, I would run to a fireman here or there. Like, I mean, it was, they were sprinkled in, into the mix and it was um, not that common for, for guys to want to go play uh, in a civilian group or, or a competition band. Um, and now that's kind of changed. And that probably, like Matt said, last few years, there's a big influx of guys and girls and like, uh, you know, how can I get better? What's going to make, you know, push me to that next level. And that's obviously the way to do it is if you're playing every week with people that are uh, pushing your to be better or better than you, you get instruction um, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's obvious. It's, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, like to see the, the grade five band. I think that's really neat. Um, was always kind of something I wanted to see happen. Way was was like an all sworn competition man, but it just became one of those deals. It was tough. We tried to do that early on. Yeah, it's tough, yeah. And and so the, one of the hard things about that is the scheduling. So, mm -hmm. like Sean and I happen to be on the exact same schedule. We're two days on, four days off, and so we're on C shift. But then, okay, make up a band, and then there's going to be guys on on. A and B, and then there's guys that do 24 on, 48 off, and then there's ones that do this like one on, one off, one on, one off, three off, one on these. So there's all these schedules, and some guys are on days. And so you, I actually sat down with all the schedules of the departments and uh, players, and I said, okay, if we were to have regular practices on Wednesday nights, I plugged in, assuming they're not taking overtime or they're not on vacation or out sick, and I plugged in where we could actually you know meet up and there were some guys i wouldn't see for two months just because of the way the days were falling and, and so even when we tried the practices we found yeah there's some interest and then all of a sudden there's two guys at this practice two different guys at that one two different, because of this scheduling issue so it's it creates a challenge in trying to do that um uh, as far as the state band you know pulling from all over it would almost have to be sort of an on the day type of situation <laughs> which is a scary preposition <laughs> let's practice yeah, now <laughs> we don't we don't want to do that yeah <laughs> those were yeah it's the top level of pipers and drummers uh that pull together to do that it would be very difficult at a grade five level to do something like that so mm -hmm. um and yeah practices ultimately become the toughest part because for competition bands it's really important to say okay every tuesday night we're having practice every friday night we have practice whatever it is um because 
that locks you in and you don't forget. But if I go this week, hey, practice is Tuesday this week, next week it's Wednesday, the following week it'll be back to Monday. You start losing people because they either forget or, um, you know, they get mixed up or whatever. So the consistency isn't there and it just it's to be really difficult to, to facilitate that kind of a endeavor as it were. So, but the great thing is that there, for the people who are inclined to go that way and want to take their musicianship to the next level, which is always how I promote it to all the drummers is just, you know, this is you developing you, the, these civilian bands are out there and the competition groups are out there and they're happy to take in, you know, especially if you say, Hey, you got someone who has been playing for years and they've been under good tutelage for years and Hey, I want to join your competition. Awesome. Great. Come on in. You know. Yep. Yeah. So kind of on that topic, sorry, did I interrupt you? No. Nope. Um, on that topic, oh, for the service bands or I guess other bands that don't have competition as like kind of their driving force, because a lot of, you know, when you're in a competition band, it's like, oh, crap, I got to get this medley down because our contest is in three months or whatever. <laughs> um, if you don't have competition as a driving force to help you improve, what inspires you? Or what inspires those people, do you think, to, to want to get better? They're in my... Uh, yeah, that's the rub. I think the people that do, and, we're, and we've, we've acknowledged, and I think and I agree on this, is that we've acknowledged not everybody's going to come along and, and, and drink the Kool-Aid, as it were. Uh, but firefighters in, the, in itself are, are very, very competitive people. So, like, if you make things to like where they can get better than the guy sitting next to them they're gonna they're gonna try like that's I mean, you have to compete to get the job you got to compete to get good assignments um you got to compete for promotions so it's the whole job is is based upon uh tr trying to out somebody so we try to kind of play off of that and make uh make guys come along on that ride but there's I mean some guys don't want to the most they would do is play Amazing Grace and that's fine too like we just want them to be able to play that as good as they possibly can you know as, as mistake free as possible and and sound good you know yeah I agree with that completely and there's some guys that the only thing they want to do is go to Colorado Springs once a year and so they dust off their instruments and show up there and there's not a lot we can do about that. You know, that's, that's up to the leadership there to manage, but, um, but there is still that drive and it's the thing that very early on we generated with this, uh, with the state band is if you're here to honor your fallen, if that's what, that's what you said. I want to get into this to honor my fallen brothers and sisters. What good is a half-assed performance? What good is it if you say, oh, no, 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 I, I figured it out. It's fine. I don't need. Why would you not want that final honor to be really fine, to be really something? That has been, that has been a, a, a sort of a dogma of ours in the state band since early on. And it's caught and people get it. And then they understand, oh, okay, all those little you know, little things like, hey, snares, look at the lead tip or, you know, learn to read, learn what that is all about. Even if you're not going to move on to other music and with other bands, master this thing that you said you were giving as, as, a, as a gift, as it were, you know, to the, to the fallen and their families. And I think that has created some inspiration and, and, and it's certainly kept us, um, like Sean was saying, some want to come along and some don't. It's kept us on a very clear track that everyone can agree with. Yep. You give me chills. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him that it goes to his head. <laughs> so what is the most challenging part about being in a fire service pipe band? Firefighters. <laughs> Dr drummers. Fibers. <laughs> 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 Appreciate that, John. It must be really difficult for you to stand there next to us, realizing how much you suck. No, yeah. It does. It's terrible. Yeah, it's so noisy. Cross. Uh, <laughs> it is quite a burden. Um, yeah, yeah. Your level of suckdom 
really defines my level of suckdom and I don't like that. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, firefighters, that's the hardest part. Yes. Right. So honestly, there's, it, there's not too much challenging, um, us, you know, like we've, I feel like we've done a really good job over the years of getting the input and the buy-in from the membership to say like the directions we go are pretty much what the majority of the, the band members want to do. Um, we might try some stuff that maybe they didn't want to and they dig it and we, we uh, continue to do that or they tell us we're stupid and then we stop doing it and we move on. Like we don't beat anything up just to try a point or anything like that. It's all, it's all been a pretty inclusive um, environment and it doesn't matter what department you work for, uh, what city, town, district, it doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a musician, you're welcome to come play with us. Um, you know, obviously a firefighter or work for the fire department musician. Um, we will have you on and, and we'll help out any way we can. And if that means, you know, push you a little bit cool. If that means you just need some help every now and then showing up at events, cool. We don't, we don't really, don't really get too deep in the weeds with how people run their individual organizations. And I think that's kind of helped us avoid too much conflict. Yeah. It's like uh, Kaylee, I was talking to you before we got started about, you know, when we came together and we'll talk about that in the next session, I'll let Sean tell you that whole story. Um, but because of the way we came together, there really weren't, the, there wasn't the opportunity for egos to kind of get at play and get ruffled because we all immediately saw a higher purpose of, you know, this whole thing about honoring properly. Um, and look, you know, any organization is going to stumble a little bit getting on its feet. So there was a little bit of, well, wait a second, who's in charge of what? And wait, I was the drum sergeant. How are you the drum sergeant? You know, there's fusion and stuff. But that settled out rather early. And I, and I will say that um let's see i gotta find the right way to say this <clears throat> so when we go to colorado springs and we're there with 400 pipes and drums i'll take the snare section 80 90 drummers um from all departments all across the u.s and canada firemen are type a personalities we we are go-getters and doers uh more so we know the right way to do it we know how it should be done and we know you're doing it wrong and, <laughs> and we will tell you that and we will tell anyone standing around us this oh, pfft, bleh, bleh, okay it's just an unfortunate rat that comes with the territory so when you have those 80 or 90 drummers and and uh, our very good friend tim Rhodes from uh, mesa fire who has been the lead snare up there for what sean 28 years Yes, yeah, for, since it started, really, 96-ish, so one first four years. Eyes to ever show up there, and now that these other 400 are showing up, and they all decide, well, I know the best, and I know it, and I So my point being that in that snare rank, you'll hear those little, you know, we'll do a practice, and we'll stop, and oh, why are they doing it this way this year? Or, oh, they, he should do this, and they should do that, and well, we do it this way, and you hear those little grumblings, and what's really been awesome is we started this state band seven years ago. I'd say the last five, maybe even six years, you can turn around and look at all the snares and not a single one of those Arizona people is a grumbler. And I, I love that. They respect, they have the respect for Tim in the first place. Um, they have the respect for what they're doing and that they're not there to fix it. It's if we all just do our piece and move forward, it'll get done. It always does. It always goes nicely. Um, and I think that's kind of a testimony to the culture that we've developed and we've been able to have with each other. And I think we've been fortunate because we remind folks too, like, I mean, the guy managing the 80 or 90 drummers and the guy managing, you know, the, the 300 pipers was going, dude, do you think you could go do it any better? You know, like, good, we can't manage, we can't manage 15 people at one of the events. It's, it's like a cluster of us having to yell and get people organized. Can you, can you imagine it with 300 and, you know, 300 pipes and 90 drummers? Yeah, have fun with that. And that's, unless you're willing to step up and help out or, you know, something like that, just do what you're asked to do and then things go a lot smoother, you know. You guys all buy off on that and it works really well. 
All right. This is the most important question of all. What is your favorite part about being in a fire service pipe band? Firefighters. Firefighters. <laughs> the most challenging part and your favorite part, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I get to hang out with my friends. I mean, that's ultimately how we have stuff in common. And then we have this other thing in common outside of, you know, just our, our normal day-to-day -day work. Um, and it, guys get close and we, I've made really good friends and uh, had a really good time. So yeah, absolutely. It's the, it's the guys and girls. Sure. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what he said. I get to hang out with my friends and Sean. And so <laughs> I'm difficult. I know it's me. <laughs> But, you know, we're, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to sound like we're terminally unique or so strange, but we, we just are of a different mindset, right? And just the, the, what we do, our job that we do and for the reasons we do and all that is sort of a, just not a common thing. I don't think I would be completely comfortable in a room full of brain surgeons in the sense of like, what's the camaraderie? I don't get it. But we have that amongst our, uh, uh, amongst ourselves and all got in it for the same reason and, and like that. But yeah, the friendships that have gotten developed out of it and uh, it have just been incredible. I mean, I've got friends all over this country uh, from it and it's just an amazing thing. And it can be a year between seeing somebody and whether it's our Colorado Memorial, I keep mentioning, or our Arizona Memorial here where maybe we don't see someone from the state for a while and you're just your best friends right there. I think that's something universal about like just civilian bands and, and those kinds of bands is just like the friendships that you make in a pipe band is, is not like any other friendship, I don't think. Com yeah, I completely agree. It is, it's much stronger and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> um, we've all had the experiences of, you know, incredible friendships. We know, uh, you know, Len's story about, you know, meeting his wife. We know, I, I know like, to have someone like uh, the drum instructors, a couple of the instructors from the Flagstaff School that I've been going to for a few years telling me, hey, anytime you come, Gordon said, anytime you come to Scotland, you stay with me and, you know, hey, Robert, hey, stay in Austria with me, you know, who does that off of a guy they, they teach a school for once a year, you know what I mean? Um, so it's a great camaraderie. What, it, what I think is really cool and I want to touch on a little bit um, is... So everybody's heard about the brotherhood of firefighters, right? We have this brotherhood among us and we do. And, it, and, it, and again, it's because we understand it. We know what each other goes through or the things we've dealt with, yada, yada, yada. Um, and so that brotherhood is really something special. And now you add on to that being in a pipe band and the way that uh, Brian Donaldson, the pipe major who leads our schools, he talks to us about this every year. And I, I almost get goose flesh thinking about his speeches when he talks about, hey, it is a big deal. And I'm not saying this to pat us on the back. I'm just relaying what he said. It is a big deal to be a firefighter, more or less is what he says. It is a really big thing. Very, very few people do that. But even fewer pick up pipes or a drum. And, you know, he would instill in us, you're amongst this very small group who has decided to take this on, you know, for no money for no whatever you, because it's the thing to do and to be proud of that and to be, you know, and, and I think it does, I think it adds uh, at the risk of sounding grandiose or whatever, it, it adds another level to that. That's really fantastic. So uh, that's all our questions for this episode, but everyone who's listening at home, stay there. I mean, don't, stay there literally because it's going to be a week before you'll hear another episode but <laughs> well, but it is quarantine so they basically stay yes. stay there <laughs> <That's over. laughs> uh yeah we're gonna have sean and matt back on the next episode and they're going to talk about this arizona fire service pipe band which is like a statewide giant conglomeration pipe band of all of the fire service pipe bands in all of arizona and it's really cool and you're going to want to hear about it so tune in next week. We will see you then. Bye. Bye. 
Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this show, then support us on Patreon for exclusive content as well as the video of us recording this. We'll have special exercises we'll be writing as well as tips and tricks with tenor drumming and other instruments to come. Um, Subscribe to us on YouTube for some tenor tutorials and possibly other tutorials later on. Um, And like us on Facebook at Podband Podcast.